Hey everybody, I'm Rich G. And I'm BJ Flagg, and this is episode 362, The Best Small Business Show, where we deliver and simplify strategies and insights that drive your business success. Yeah, today's topic is green business practices. Uh, this is something we've been wanting to talk about for a long time. And we're going to be talking all about sustainability strategies for your business. Uh, these are little things that you could do uh, to help you along. So why don't we uh, dive right in? Uh, it's not the big things. Like we're not asking you to do these big overhauls. It's the right, small right. little things. Yeah. And, and, you know, from a marketing standpoint, I hate to go there, but I have to. You can reduce your environmental footprint and enhance your reputation and yeah. attract socially conscious consumers. So in, it's a win-win. You've got a win-win happening here, Rich. Yeah. It's not just smart. It, you're going to save a lot of money and time. Uh, you're, yeah. and, and on top of it, you're going to reduce pollution, conserve natural resources, and produce less waste. So it's a win-win for everyone. Absolutely. So let's get started. Rich, kick us off with tip number one. Well, tip one is we want you to reduce the pollution from your business. Um, number one is use renewable energy whenever you can. Sources like solar power uh, can help can help reduce a green re greenhouse gas emissions and pollution. So if you have the ability in your building or your home to do solar, that that really helps out. It simplifies a lot. Mm -hmm. Second is you need to choose sustainable suppliers. Okay, this might uh, take you might have to relook at all of your vendors and suppliers and ask them to consider using recycled materials reduce the packaging you might have a business where you get a lot of packaging in and you have to spend a lot of time breaking it down putting it away garbaging it there might be a way for them to reduce packaging and then also selecting products with low carbon footprints um, yeah another way is reduce your travel Okay, uh, have your team become more hybrid. Fewer employees commuting means fewer greenhouse gas emissions. It also means fewer <laughs> employees in the office, which can right. reduce the waste and power consumption. Um, online meetings, reduce carbon emissions and save money. I found out, you know, uh, the easy way after, uh, you know, the pandemic, we've I, I, my clients don't really want to meet in person anymore. They're happy with Zoom. So I'm like, yeah. that sounds great. They don't have to drive anywhere. I don't have to drive anywhere. It increases our productivity because we're not spending our time in the car and it eliminates any kind of travel time. The only thing I miss right. is listening to podcasts while I'm in the car. Exactly, exactly. But you know what? Even if there's a lot of systems where you can volunteer and offset emissions, and you can invest in these projects that remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere, such as like tree planting projects, things like that. So your company can actually uh, um, counteract any of the carbon footprint that you have. Yeah, and this is something that you and your team can do. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Let's go, let's spend a Friday at noon, let's go plant some trees. You know, yeah. I already talked to uh, the first selectman and they said we could plant a whole bunch of trees here. It's not that expensive. And think of the marketing and branding ability to say yeah. your, your company's planting trees in a park. Yeah. And you know what? If, if you think of using an energy management systems and monitoring your energy consumption, you're going to be shocked. You will totally be shocked and say to yourself, oh, my God, I got to use fuel efficient equipment. It's got to be biodegradable materials. I've got to I've got to make an impact here. So believe you me, that step in its own would be big. So awesome. I have a couple of take action tips if you'd like me to share. Sure. Um, <laughs> implement um, recycling programs that can eliminate waste. I know this sounds kind of 
like intuitive, like you should do that at work, but you need to take it up to the level of your business. So, you know, now I'm making you think about that. I need you to use energy efficient practices such as the multi garbage collection. I know that sounds like, oh, but we have single stream at our company. No, no, no. We're talking about eliminating waste out of that collection that can be used by people and businesses to be productive. So it really works really amazing. And also, you you know, work with your employees to develop initiatives that, um, you know, create, you know, green culture. Yeah. And, you know, it it all sounds like, you know, Pollyannish and, oh, wouldn't it be nice? But at yes. the end of the day, you're saving money and time if you yes. do these things. And I'm going to keep saying that all the way through this podcast. Yes. I and want you to get you, that. Yeah. To, get that when, in your head. Save you, money. Yeah. When you achieve a low carbon footprint, you're saving money and time to do these types yeah. of things. Exactly. Um, we're going to go into tip number two, which is conserve natural resources. Really, that's what we're after. We're, we want you to embrace every time thinking it through. Just think it through one step further and you're going to be a winner. One of the first things I want you to do is to be a papatarian. And this sounds culture, counterculture, but I need you to reuse, reduce and recycle all types of paper in 2022 and this is going to be amazing stats you're not going to believe it rich but 93.6 percent of the car corrugated cardboard packaging and nearly 68 percent of the paper was recycled in the u.s we have got this down folks we have got this down and it was initiatives that created this to happen approximately 80 percent of the U of the U.S. paper and packaging mills use some sort of recycled fibers in their products, such as like corrugated cardboard is like seventy to one hundred percent recycled material. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, and also reduce single use plastic. Uh, time to get everybody at work. You, you get a water flask with your logo on it, you know, and hand it out to everybody. Hand it out to your clients and stuff. Think about yeah. like your, your clients are walking around with your logo because they've got a really <laughs> cool flask. I have a Yeti cup with my name on it, you know, so yes. I'm not using single use plastic. Exactly. And you know what? Offsetting admissions within your business, you can invest in projects that reduce those those carbon, um, you know, the the greenhouse gases that I had talked about. And there are actual companies that can come into your company and totally show you exactly what you can do. So don't think you're doing it on your own. There are people out there that could help you for sure. Excellent. So we want you to take action. First of all, form an action team at work. You know, this isn't a huge project, but just nominate two or three people who are probably interested in doing this anyway. And what areas can you affect in the, the entire production process of your business that could save materials? And I'm going to say again, money and time. You know, you have this action team. You could possibly save thousands of dollars. Second, oh. optimize your water usage. Install low flow faucets, toilets, irrigation systems. Regularly check for leaks and implement water saving practices. Yeah. And these um, are all things that are doable, right, Rich? I the, the, mean, literally doable. You could do them tomorrow if you wanted yeah. to. And yeah. then finally, and I don't know if BJ likes this one, is produce digital <laughs> over paper. No, uh, I do. I'm just saying. Yeah. Encourage yeah. <laughs> a paperless office by adopting digital documents, e-signatures, and cloud storage. I did this about three years ago. I used to take all my notes with clients on paper because I thought I was a, a, uh, a, a tactical kind of, I had to write everything down, kinesthetic uh, client, uh, a, a coach. And Person, I yeah. used to write, and I have file folders that were bustling with paper. And I finally decided, you know what, I'm going to just take notes in Apple Notes. And I've been doing this for three years. It's the best decision I ever made. 
I know, uh, I know. And you know what is, we don't have any file cabinets in our entire office, no file cabinets. It, as soon, if you do take notes in a meeting, well, first of all, most of the meetings are recorded and then transcribed. You have to take a picture of your notes and put them into our base camp, which is our production software program. No paper, no paper sticks around and everything gets recycled. It's like, we're crazy about that for sure. Well, tip so, three is produce less waste. Reduce yeah. your food waste to re reduce your carbon footprint. If you're a restaurant or a, a, a company that utilizes food, conduct a waste audit to ensure that waste is disposed of properly and help minimize your environmental impact. Do you know one of the most coolest things? My cousin uh, down in um, Maryland, he started a program for after school, for um, you know, regular school uh, buildings where if there was any food left over, everything got taken immediately over to the shelter. Mm -hmm. So not, not, you know, wait, not wasted food, but that. And then when the kids learned, they had, you know, education on look at your plate. Is there anything that could go into give it to a friend? And they learned, oh, I didn't drink my, my juice box, put it in to give it to a friend. And the program has been hugely successful. All the schools do it so much less waste to throw out. And it all gets used and it, you know, it gets to feed people who, um, you know, need it right away. So it's just phenomenal program. Yeah. It, it, this kind of behavior not only cuts costs, but yeah. it significantly reduces your carbon footprint, contributing to a more sustainable business model. You know, recycle or refurbish your office equipment and electronics. Yeah. I know every business goes through every two to three years, you have to refresh. It's like, well, maybe you can donate your monitors or computers to a school or to a, uh, a club or something. You could find yeah. a source that could benefit from this equipment. Don't just throw it out. Yeah, absolutely. I got a couple of take action tips. Implement a waste reduction plan within that uh, action team that you're creating to minimize your small business um, you know, environmental impact. It's a particular part of this whole entire solution. And there are going to be some people at work that are more interested in this. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be another whole group that's more interested in planting trees. So you have to kind of balance out how you're going to affect and benefit, you know, everybody. You also want to just say to yourself, every one of these things, reducing food waste, optimizing, um, you know, in the inventory management, donating surplus, all these things. Those tight controls focus you on what you're doing best. And that is the most exciting thing. You want to create a environment where people get it and they love working there. Yeah. And they also, the consumers love you. They love you because you're doing, doing this. Um, so let me take you into the tip number four, which is reduce your environmental footprint. This is an area that you can immediately see results, which is exciting. If you have a fleet of cars, for instance, for your business, consider EV. What is it that you can do to make that better? Consider the benefits and what would in the long run affect your business to the, to the positive. Conservation of electricity has made a huge impact in America. Speak to your energy company about ways to improve and reduce your energy usage. In Connecticut, we have a real issue with energy. We pay the highest energy rates. And everything that we can do, we try to reduce energy use. Yeah. Also, be looking at your supply chain. We've mentioned this a couple times in this podcast but it is so important to figure out ways to reduce the length a product gets to market. Yes, there are easy ways to produce your product. You know, very easy. I'm going to send it overseas and have it come back. But that amount of time 
and energy and everything that you've done, there's a more efficient way. You just need to spend a little time thinking about it. Cool. Well, we have some action steps for this last tip. First of all, implement energy efficiency measures. Upgrade to energy efficient appliances. That's huge. I mean, anywhere you go now, everything's energy efficient. Um, lighting. <clears throat> Do an, imp, uh, an assessment of all of your lighting and your HVAC systems. Um, regularly maintain equipment to ensure optimal performance and reduce your energy consumption. And adopt sustainable sourcing. Choose suppliers that are eco-friendly practices and prioritize materials that are recycled, biodegradable, and sustainably produced. Yeah, and uh, finally, reduce your waste and promote recycling. Uh, making that jump, that mindset jump, not only with your business, but your people, your vendors, and your customers, it, 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 implementing a comprehensive recycling program uh, encourages everyone to minimize paper use. And it's funny how you start doing it and people appreciate it. Um, if you have a company uh, that has organic waste, you know, donate the excess products and reduce landfill contributions. Constantly think about what you're doing, how you can affect it. And you might even not only save money, but make money doing this type of thing. Exactly. Tell us our first book. Our first book recommendation is Green to Gold, How Smart Companies Use Environmental Strategy to Innovate, Create Value, and Build Competitive Advantage. This is a great book by Daniel Esty and Andrew Wils, uh, Winston. Um, it's, it's full of hard-nosed business advice for gaining a competitive advantage through sustainability. It's a wonderful book. And whether yeah. you're a climate change skeptic or an environmentalist these sustainability issues cannot be ignored in today's corporate world not only does it make your company look good and I'm, i sounded like a broken record you're going to save money I know. you are I know. You, okay I know. so if you're a total skeptic that's fine you're going to save money and time if you do these types of things exactly and book number two is making sustainability work this is a concern that a lot of people have um, best practices to managing and measuring corporate, social, environmental, and economic impacts. It's a great book by Mark Epstein and um, Andrea. Etch I can never get her name right. Behovic. Behovic. They're both. They're both amazing, amazing authors. But you know, most companies today have some sort of commitment to corporate social responsibility they got it on their website you're not quite sure how much they're actually doing but with their this book the sole objective is being proving the financial performance you know that's really every business's most important thing but sustainability broadens that focus to include social and environmental performance which is much more difficult to measure but so incredible when you do. Um, I think the book has some great examples, which you know I love all those examples, and it has a complete guide to implementing and measuring the effectiveness of your program. So I love it. That was a good book for sure. And you can save money and time. Thank you, so, I'm just gonna keep I saying it. That. Save money and time. <laughs> That's it. Well, that's a wrap. We invite you to share this episode on LinkedIn. Instagram, X, and TikTok with the hashtag, the best small business show. And thank you for tuning in. If this episode has been valuable to you, take advantage of future insights. Subscribe, follow, and share it with other budding entrepreneurs who could benefit from it. Your support helps us reach more people and make a more significant impact. Here's the hint. We publish a podcast every Tuesday. We're not yes. those podcasts that do one and then you don't hear from us for a month or two. We've been doing yeah. this for almost seven years. So every right. Tuesday when you subscribe, there'll be a new podcast waiting for you. Yes. And when we say support, it's everybody sending us emails of incredible new topics to talk about. 
Mm -hmm. uh, insight on the last topic we talked about, sometimes good, sometimes an opinion. <laughs> and, and, and BJ, I got to tell you, the amount of emails I get of people oh that want gosh. to that want to be a guest on our show and i have to nicely tell them we don't host people we we talk yes. about topics um right right these people are just we trying might, to sell things they're and gonna I wear don't us like down that. i know yeah. they're gonna wear us down but you're right i don't we're not here to promote them yeah we're we're here, and we really choose these books you know when we were talking about the books earlier we really choose those books based on the fact that they're good yeah they're the ones and, and not just that somebody wants to hawk a book so sorry sorry yes. about that but to learn more and to talk to our team so yes send us that email contact me bjplag at neurenew.com for all your brand marketing needs and reach out to my podcast partner rich g richg.com if you want the best business coach to help you grow your business and thanks to our editor and producer, Richard Scalzo, who picks the best graphics for our oh my podcast gosh, all so the time. Good. Have yeah. an unbelievable week, and we'll catch you later. Mm -hmm.